Welcome back, everyone. So we're just over a month in uh, physical distancing. We're all staying at home and we are doing so willingly. We want this to be over soon. But during our time at home, our beauty routines have changed. Some of the professionals that we see on a weekly or semi-weekly basis, um, we haven't been able to do that, which means we need some help. And to do that, we're gonna check in with our beauty expert, Natalie Smith, to give us some DIY advice. Hi, Natalie, how are you? Hi, everyone, good to see you. Hey, Nat, so good to see you. Okay, so here's the thing, as Lainey mentioned, I rely on a host of beauty professionals uh, to help me out, but that's obviously not happening right now. So DIY it is, although DIY seems a little bit intimidating, Natalie. Trust me, it is easier than you think. And while we know that in the grand scheme of world events, worrying about the small stuff like our grown out gel polish or brows is fairly inconsequential, a bit of beauty self care as a means of just Maintaining some sense of normalcy is a worthy endeavor. Okay, here's where I desperately need your help and other people I imagine too. Um, before this happened, I had a standing nail appointment at the nail bar and my nails were always perfect. But of course we don't go to the nail bar anymore, at least we're not supposed to, and I haven't been going to the nail bar, I don't even think it's open. Um, so what I've been doing is picking off my nail polish. What's a classier method to handle your nails? <laughs> I know, gel polish is the single greatest beauty invention ever with one glaring drawback and that's removal. And while I know they need the urge to just pick and peel it away is so strong, I need you to resist this as doing so will actually peel off thin layers of your nail, leaving them more weakened and damaged. The best way to do it takes a bit more time and patience but will keep your nails in good shape. All you need is a coarse nail file, a cotton pad, acetone, and some tin foil. So we're gonna start by taking the coarse side of our nail file, and you just wanna to start to lightly sand down that top coat of polish. You're really just looking to rough up the surface, remove that shine, so that the acetone can penetrate deeply. Once you've done that, you can take an acetone-soaked cotton ball or pad, apply it to your nail, and then wrap it all up with a square of tin foil. Now, the important part is having the patience to allow the gel time to lift. So I always say soak one hand at a time. That way you always have one hand free to send a text message, check on that sourdough starter, whatever it is you're up to. Once you've waited no less than 15 minutes, it's time to check the progress. The gel should look softened and almost gummy-like, easily pushed away with some pressure from that cotton pad. If that's not the case, you need to soak longer. Once you've re removed the majority of your polish in this way, you can just target any stubborn remaining spots with a cuticle file. Mine is stainless steel. A normal wooden disposable stick works well too. Just want to apply some light pressure. This method will work wonders on shellac, gel, acrylics, and dip powder. So happy soaking. I have to ask you about this. I was snuggling up um, with Dash the other day. We were watching a movie. We were on the couch. And he says to me, Mom, your feet feel like sandpaper. And I have to <laughs> say, the kid's not wrong, right? Like, hey, kids are honest. So I'm not getting uh, in to get a pedicure anytime soon. So what do you suggest for callus removal, Nat? I know, Marcy, one of the beauty treats I always relish after a long winter and to really break my feet of hibernation is a pedicure. But the good news is callus removal is pretty simple to do at home. All you need is some warm water, Epsom salts, baking soda, a bit of essential oil, and a foot file or pumice. So once you've made your warm bath, you can just add some Epsom salts, which I like to do. It's gonna be really soothing. Then I like to add a bit of baking soda. Fun fact, it's a mild natural exfoliant. That's gonna start to really break down and help any thickened skin be more easily removed. For a treat, we're gonna add in a few drops of essential oil like the one I had on hand from Sage. It's a bit minty. It's gonna make me feel like I'm getting the full spa experience. 
So once you've been soaking for a little bit, you can then start to use your foot file or pumice, apply firm pressure in a circular motion. The goal is not to tackle the whole callus all at once, but rather to work it away over the course of a few soaks and get back on your smooth, healthy feet in no time. Okay, so Natalie, our hands and our feet, after advice from you, are a little less janky, but now how do we maintain <laughs> How do we maintain it? <laughs> so I always like to follow up with a really nourishing, super sweet, natural cuticle treatment like coconut oil. I happen to eat all of mine, so I have a bit of olive oil on hand. That does the trick really well. You can just dab and apply this to the cuticle bed and nail and uh, and nail bed. And that's really, really great. Allow that to absorb. And then you're just going to level up the treatment with a rich, nourishing hand balm like cakes, heavy cream. This is really going to soothe and soften everything up. This is only six bucks. The brand also makes a really great foot cream, hailing in at only eight bucks. It's minty, buttery oils that will melt away into your skin. Both of these are Canadian, cruelty free, and vegan. Well, that sounds great. Okay, I am dipping my hand in the olive oil right now uh, while I ask this next question, Nat. Go for and that it. is, what do you suggest? What's your go-to solution for breakouts? And this is great, by the way. So for blemishes, I like a natural spot treatment like tea tree oil. Most of us will have this on hand in our medicine cabinets at home. Or a hybrid like Thursday Plantation's medicated tea tree gel. This is just 12 bucks. It's clear. It's going to go to work on blackheads, pimples, whiteheads. And of course, it can tea tree oil, which fights and prevents breakouts. Some people react with breakouts. Others, through stress, have dry skin and it gets really irritated. So what do you suggest for people who, who fall into that category? That's my category right now, and I recommend bringing your routine back to basics. You really want to eliminate products with fragrances or dyes, and I highly recommend adding an emollient moisturizer into your lineup, like CeraVe. It is a moisture bomb complete with three essential ceramides, a hyaluronic acid. It's really going to help your skin appear its most even-toned, responsible self right now. Let's talk, Nat, about our brows, because they need all sorts of grooming. Now is really not the time for a complete overhaul. You're looking to just do minimal maintenance with a light hand. So we're going to start by taking our makeup brushes. We want to find the start and ending points of our brow. So you can just tuck it into the dip of the nose, let it track up through the inner corner of the eye, and then into the brow line. That'll be the starting point for your brow. Then you can rotate that to the outer corner of the eye and then back up into the brow line, and that's the ending point. With these measurements in mind, we can start to begin to fill in our brows, taking our time to really get them just the way we like them. Of course, my go-to is going to be Mate's Brow Boudoir Kit. It is a palm-sized kit of everything you need to create the perfect brow shape. You have two complementing brow powders and a clear setting balm that's infused with castor oil, as well as two mini makeup brushes. This is something we're really proud of here at Mink because for the next month, 100% of the profits from the online sales of this kit will go directly to support our frontline workers who are doing such an incredible job of keeping us all really safe and well right now. So now that our brows are parfait, we can start by using a brush and we're just going to brush our brows outwards and upwards. And then you can take your scissors and trim just tips of any hairs that are extending and peeking outside of our created design. Once you've done that, you can finally take your tweezers. Any hairs that are completely outside of a created shape, those are fair game. Go ahead and tweeze those. Just remember to tweeze in the direction of hair growth so you're not creating any breakage um, or ingrowns. Nat, thank you so much. This has been great. And for those of you who want Nat's DIY tips, just head to the website after the show. Stay well, Nat. We're back after this.